I have three children, two sons and one daughter of which the sons being the elder, 31 and 29, and my daughter being the youngest, 23. I am reaching the point of my life where it is time for me to retire and take it easy for the rest of my years on this planet. During my prime, I got a fairly well-paying job and saved almost every penny of it, except for the money I used to get my basic necessities, and maybe treat myself a little here and there, and have managed to save around $500,000. My two eldest children are both fairly well off, one of which works as a medical physician and the other owns his own small business. My daughter, on the other hand, has been going to university and collected a fair amount of student loans, only partially getting by working as a waitress. Around two weeks ago I decided to make a will in which I left every penny of my savings, my vehicle, and my home, to my daughter, believing she would make the most use out of it. I gathered my children and wife around the table a short bit later and discussed the contents of the will, and immediately felt tension between my two eldest children. But, I decided to let it go. Yesterday night my two sons told me that they needed to talk to me, and asked if they could come over. I agreed and shortly after they both showed up. They immediately let everything off of their shoulders, saying they felt like they mean nothing to me because I decided not to leave them anything after my death. I tried to explain to them the reasoning behind my decisions but they couldn't care less. Finally, I told them they have no right to tell me how I should leave my possessions after I die and that it was my, and only my, decision as to what happens to my assets, thus causing them both to storm off, get in their cars, and drive off. Since then, neither of them has called or texted me. You are the idiot. Not because of how you split your assets in your will, they're your assets, do what you like, although if you pre-decease your wife she can probably change everything anyway, but for the drama, resentment, strife, and unrest you're going to cause between your three kids. You will be dead, so you won't be affected, but you will destroy the relationship between your three children. Split it evenly, or give it to cats or give more to your daughter to pay off her student loans, but if you give it all to her you'll make sure she never has a good relationship with her brothers. Stupid move. Not the idiot. I think it was a little bit over the top giving your daughter everything instead of just giving her significantly more than the other two, but the idea of leaving her more money since she earns much less is completely fair. A lot of people are saying that your children are going to tear themselves apart over the money, but if they do that's on them. If they're going to be materialistic and blame you for giving your sister more financial aid than your two sons who seem to be a lot more financially safe, that's on them. You are the idiot. This guy just blew up his family so he can show them all that he rewards failure from being mediocre to average and punishes success. Great ducking lesson. Giving her all the money based on where she is now though, does strongly imply I don't expect you to improve your life that much though so you'll need the money since you're clearly not as capable as your brothers. OP expect to be near cut off from your sons for the rest of your miserable life. Update. First of all, thank you to everyone who shared their opinions in this matter and helped me come to a new decision. I am meeting with my lawyer on Wednesday to get my will changed with the following changes. Money saved throughout my life will now be split four ways, one quarter to daughter and one quarter to each son with the remaining one quarter being donated to an unnamed charity. House will now be joint owned by each of my children and the vehicle will go to my nephew who just got his permit. I realize my mistake in the creation of my original will and am now trying to fix the issues and apologize to my children for my mistake. Thanks again to everyone who submitted their opinions in the comments and for helping me decide what to do with my assets after my inevitable death. Good for you for realizing your mistake, honestly though it should have been clear from the start. Changing your will sort out the money issues but as was clear the money was only one part of it. You were willing to leave your sons nothing, and they know it now. You need to put a hell of a lot of work into fixing relationships with your sons, don't expect there to be a simple I'm leaving you money now so it's all okay. You cut your sons out putting them back in won't fix the emotional rift you created. Eat a lot, and I mean a lot of humble pie. Not the idiot yeah being so one-sided with who it's left to will cause problems, it's cool you have left money to charity also but I can't help feeling the sons were also wrong in their reaction, miffed sure, but storm off and not want to talk to their father, sorry but that's a bit of an idiot move also. My mum was leaving me multiples of what op is leaving, after a long life of working hard and getting to the top of her game, I've told her I want none of it and to spend it all on herself. To each their own, however, it is great to see a happy outcome. 
So my fiancé, 30, and I, 33, have been engaged now for a couple of months. We haven't talked too much about the wedding and all but tonight she brought up our wedding party. I was excited to talk about this because I have many close male friends and a brother. I told her I wanted my four childhood friends, my best friend from college, and my brother to be my best man. She told me this was way too many people. She had always wanted a small wedding party of three each. She wanted to be able to buy kind of expensive gifts for each person we asked to be at the party and she said that having 12 people to buy gifts for was way too much. I told her we could easily afford the gifts she had in mind for 12 people because we both do very well and both had large savings that we would be using for the wedding. This sent her into tears. She got very upset about this and asked me what she was supposed to do, ask strangers to be in her bridal party? You see my wife does not have a lot of female friends. She planned her bridal party to be her best friend, only female friend, and her stepsister and her one RST cousin. I felt bad this was upsetting her so badly but I always thought that it was obvious I was going to need these people at my wedding party. We argued a little bit until she sarcastically apologized for not having enough friends for me. She went to our room and locked the door still crying and refuses to answer me or open up. I don't think I've really done anything wrong but when I called my brother and told him he said I was being an idiot. He told me she was obviously very self-conscious about her lack of friends and it was hurting her feelings. I told him I didn't want to hurt any of my friends feelings by picking between them and he told me didn't know what to tell me. No idiots here. I don't think you are wrong for wanting friends at the wedding and she's not wrong for feeling self-conscious. I've been in and to weddings where the bridal party has not been evenly split and it has never been an issue at all. It's about asking the people you care about to stand by you, not the quantity of those people. I hope you two can agree to just ask those you love and know that the number doesn't matter. Congrats on your upcoming wedding. Not the idiot. It sounds like she may have enough friends but has only included her female friend because it's widely assumed that that is the only way things are done. But you could suggest to her that her male friends be in the bridal party on her side as well. It may not be the most conventional but I've definitely seen it before. She may or may not want to but posing this as an option to her definitely wouldn't hurt. You are the idiot. You're not willing to compromise with your soon-to-be wife on this. Six groomsmen are a lot. And making this a hill to die on before your marriage even starts is not a good idea. There is definitely room for compromise here. If she only wants three bridesmaids, then you can have three groomsmen and ask the other three to be ushers so that they are still involved with the wedding party, and maybe she picks someone to be a fourth usher. You shouldn't be doing anything that makes your wife insecure about her own wedding day. I've been a single mom to two kids since they were six and four, their dad passed away. Around that time, my son was formally diagnosed as autistic. He's not very verbal and prone to physical outbursts when he has a meltdown. He's been in therapies of every kind for his entire life and it's helped somewhat. Their dad had a life insurance policy which allowed me to stay home as my son's main caregiver while working freelance, but money was tight, and finding anyone capable of watching him has always been a challenge. My daughter was graduating from college last year. A week before the ceremony, she had an award ceremony for academic achievement. I was obviously incredibly proud of her. She asked me to come to it and I said I would. Her college is two hours from here. I hired a trained sitter who specializes in autism the day of the ceremony. Right as I was about to leave, my son had a meltdown and was lashing out at the sitter. I couldn't leave, and he wasn't calm for hours. I'd left my daughter a voicemail saying I wasn't going to be able to make it. She called back that night absolutely livid. She called me a bad mother, said I had two kids but only cared about one that I'd missed every game and performance she'd had as a child and it clearly wasn't going to change as adults and that she was just done. She said she knows he can't help it, but her brother is incapable of showing empathy and it made it hard to be around him without resenting him. She hung up and that was it. I've barely spoken with her since. She didn't send tickets for the graduation we were supposed to go to the next week. She hasn't shown up for holidays and I've heard she's engaged but didn't call to tell me. She's cut us out and in one of three times we've spoken since she said it's easier for her to not have us around than be disappointed and that being alone at events is nothing new for her, she just doesn't have to bother getting her hopes up I might come now. I've offered family counseling and all other manners of things. 
I know I wasn't a perfect mom growing up, I didn't make it to her things, but not for lack of caring. I'm heartbroken but I don't think my not showing up in an emergency should have lost me, my daughter, forever. This poor kid lost her dad and then, in effect, lost her mom. Her mom put her firmly in the second place role and sent a very clear message, you are not important enough for me to carve out a couple of hours for something that's very important to you. You are second fiddle to your brother. I will break my promises to you. If OP was my mom and literally never showed up to a single event, I wouldn't bother telling her about getting free extra guacamole at Chipotle, much less about my engagement. This wasn't a one-off event this was a long time coming. Daughter has cut off a painful appendage, and good riddance. Not the idiot. Who the hell cares that much about going to the graduation ceremony? It's four hours long and stuffed to the brim with empty pomp and circumstance. I hated my high school one, repeatedly asked my parents to get out of my college one but couldn't, and flat out didn't attend my law school one. Pointless ceremony and a gigantic waste of everybody's time. I bet you paid for her entire college too and she can't get over you not attending a single, meaningless event so you could take care of your medically handicapped son, what a joke. No idiots here. You've tried your best. But she needed more. She had felt neglected and it's obviously been building up. She's hurt. But you didn't hurt her on purpose. When you can tell her you love her, you understand why she's hurt, you're sorry, and you will always love her. Then give her space to deal. She'll want her mom back in her life. She still loves you, too, but it's painful to feel ignored even if you understand why. A couple of days ago, my parents decided to host our daughter's birthday party. It was a special occasion because she was going to be 16. My daughter had some plans with her friends and we decided to host the party at night. We invited our extended family and friends and told them that the party would start at 7 p.m. My husband was supposed to pick her up on his way back from his workplace. Well, my husband and daughter were supposed to be there by 7, but they ended up arriving at 8. It was not much of a party without my daughter. We had to start late and my parents were really upset. Apparently, the traffic delayed him. I was really upset. I told him he should have started early. So I asked him to apologize to my parents for what he had done, but he refused and decided to walk out. After learning what happened, my daughter walked out with him and they ruined everything. They now refuse to talk to me. I think they should appreciate what my parents tried to do for her. I also think my daughter acted like a child. Not the idiot. Your husband obviously should have known ahead of time that traffic was going to be bad. He also should have anticipated that by being an hour late the party wouldn't be much of a party. I can't believe he wouldn't apologize for ruining the party for his daughter. And your daughter too. What an ungrateful, unappreciative child. Is this what you wanted to hear? I didn't mean a word of it. You are so very obviously the total idiot here. But I don't blame you 100%. Seems like that's the kind of environment you grew up in. Because your parents are idiots too for getting all upset over this. Sheesh. You are the idiot, you cause a huge scene at her party because they were late due to traffic, it happens. You ruin the party by creating a scene and forcing your husband and daughter to leave out of principle. Could your family really not entertain themselves for an hour without your daughter? This day was about your daughter and you made it about your parents, to the point that she no longer wanted to celebrate her birthday with you. Think on that. You are the idiot, you could have had a wonderful night regardless. Stuff happens, why make people have anxiety over something that was probably out of their control and ruin the night? Do you go at him, them anytime something doesn't go exactly your way? That's not how to be a partner. You are a partner to someone by having their back while they're running late. Telling them drive safe I'll occupy everyone so they can relax and not worry you're going to blow up when they get there. I have never seen eye to eye with my mother-in-law. Mill also has a boyfriend who I don't care for either. It has been her dream to take my kids on a Disney cruise ever since they were born. We have had massive issues with her not caring about their safety, most egregious example, she let my daughter ride on the dashboard, yes the dashboard, of her car on the highway going 80 miles per hour. Her excuse was she had so much fun. I couldn't help it. So I told her that if we could all go then maybe I would consider it. 
Her boyfriend's mom died last year and he got like a small $30,000 inheritance and she talked him into spending it all on a Disney cruise for the entire family. Two of them, husband and I, two kids. I am going because everyone is excited but I am dreading every single minute of it. I don't really like cruises, Disney is not my thing and we are going to be away from our business for about two weeks so getting back is going to be a nightmare. I was packing up last night and my now 8 year old came up to me and said grandma said we are going to push you over the railing on day 1 so the rest of us can have some fun. I was like whoa. I asked her what else she said and it was something like when you're drowning she's going to hook daddy up with a lady who isn't such a snit about bad food. I immediately went to my husband and told him I was cancelling the trip. She has said things like this to my kids before so while it may not be an exact retelling, I know Bella didn't make this up. My husband is begging me not to cancel because he really needs a break from work. I told him fine, we'll take a two week camping trip or go to the beach but for me being around his mom will be worse than work, let alone she made a joke about murdering me. Kids are despondent that we might not go and now the guilt is getting to me. Would I be the idiot if I cancel this trip? Not the idiot, who boy, what a piece of work your mill is. You're going to have to confront his mother and he's going to have to have your back. I'm sure she'll say she's just kidding but you've got to do it anyway. That being said, I don't know if backing the whole fam out is the way to go, only because I remember being a kid having so many super fun plans cancelled at the last minute because one family member was mad at the other. A cruise sounds like a nightmare to me, too, so I'm on your side whatever you choose. Everyone's the idiot here. Don't punish your kids for her behavior. Instead, make this your farewell tour. Go on the cruise, have a good time with your kids and husband. And then go no contact with Mill. Make it very clear to your husband that once the cruise is over, you will have no contact with Mill ever again. And the only contact she can have with the kids will be supervised in a public place at your discretion. Not the idiot. One possible scenario, ask your kids how they feel when the grandma talks that way about you. If they don't like it, tell them they can state that to her I don't like when you talk about my mom like that. If they sort of shrug, let them know it hurts you and to tell you when grandma says mean stuff. When they see that you are hurt, they might naturally feel protective of you and want to tell her to stop on their own. 